View from the top. Business leaders review the news on video for FT.com. This week, George Roberts and Henry Kravis of KKR. In this segment, discussing the evolution of KKR. Well, let's talk about KKR itself and the impact of the situation on KKR and how KKR is evolving. Um, you have major initiatives in the capital markets, major initiatives in asset management. Can you talk about how KKR will look, say, three years from today? The days of financial engineering are long gone. So that's, that's the foundation that we had. Uh, then from that we said, okay, what other uh, product lines are an extension, a logical extension of the expertise that we have within KKR. And the first one, which started about four and a half years ago, uh, was our fixed income business. And uh, we set up KKR Financial. Uh, and uh, that, because we have so much experience in credit and credit analysis, uh, we, we set that up. And then off of that, so you can look at it like a, a barbell. And at one end of the barbell is the private equity business, and the other end of the, of the spectrum, uh, the barbell is the uh, uh, fixed income uh, business. Uh, and from that, we have mezzanine, we have debtor and possession financing, we, we uh, certainly have the senior uh, all the way through the high yield on the on the fixed income side and then on the back more toward the private equity side uh, we have the infrastructure uh, investments yeah look I think the another way of looking at it you know if our brain is so big this is how much we just use in private equity so we're really not using the rest of our brain we analyze companies we analyze investments all the time if you can understand uh, how to invest in private equity, you ought to uh, be able to understand to how to invest in debt. You ought to be able to do, do the same analysis, whether it be senior debt, high yield debt, mezzanine, whatever it is. Uh, we've done four or five infrastructure deals anyway, so why not have a pool of capital to do that? And why not tie that all together with a, a capital markets group that can actually go out and source other capital for you, give you advice and insights into the market? We're not going to displace Wall Street but uh, this way we will have, uh, for our own use, um, eyes and ears and feet on the street of people that are actually talking directly to the investors as opposed to having to use XYZ Bank to give us the input. Uh, so that's really the, 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 the thesis core. The, uh, private equity always will be the, the core business for us, so we'll always have the most assets there. But we want to build around that and use uh, more of our intellectual uh, capability to do it. How concerned are you about possible protectionism, economic nationalism in this country? Oh, very, very concerned. I think if you, uh, both in terms of protectionism and trade barriers, but more important on intellectual capital. I mean, just look at all of the, uh, the people that, are, that go to the major uh, institutions in the U.S. from foreign countries, and yet when their education is finished, they have to leave the country. So they go work in another country uh, uh, for a competitor that competes against the U.S. This doesn't make a lot of sense to do it. Okay, I mean, Mike Bloomberg has exactly the right answer. He said, I would stand at the end of the graduation line as they're picking up their diploma, and I'd give everybody who graduated in the top of the uh, part of the class, I'd give them a green card, and I'd make sure that they were staying here. But no, we're sending these people back home. We're encouraging them to leave by saying, no, we don't want you here. Uh, you know, so fine, they'll go back home and they're going to compete with us. Uh, you know, this is crazy. Let's talk a moment geographically. Many people say the U.S. is the most attractive investment opportunity today. You did a very interesting deal in Korea. I'm told that your price was not the lowest, uh, the highest, and yet you won. Um, how important will Asia be relatively looking around the world today? Where will KKR be focusing? 
I think we're going to focus uh, wherever we think there's value. Uh, you know, we're looking uh, in Asia, in every corner of Asia. Uh, we're looking in the States. We're looking in Europe. We're looking in uh, uh, some of the uh, countries like Turkey uh, and elsewhere where uh, there are opportunities. And so uh, the Middle East will be an area that we will be looking in. And, you know, we're, we're probably going to do a few more investments in China, they'll be different than the U.S., they'll be smaller, they'll be more growth-oriented investments. You're not, you're not able to own control of a company. Yeah, it'll be partnership right. uh, with people that right. are locals. Same with India. Uh, mm -hmm. So you really have to look at both where the opportunities are and where the risks are. And, um, and we certainly take a lot of that into consideration. We're running out of time, so I'll just ask you a final question before we move on to the long short. KKR has such an awesome brand in the world. To what ex what are the advantages for private equity to go public, and what are the risks in general? Uh, the uh, the ability to have permanent capital uh, is a real advantage uh, in today's in any world, but especially in today's world where you're not having to go out every three or four or five years and fundraise. Uh, where we have long dated capital from our partners, but that has to be returned and then you have to go raise more money again, which we'll always do. But it will be nice to have a broader capital base than what we have today. You know, it's, um, you look at examples uh, around the world, an example that, that I always like to use, and, and I say that uh, Berkshire Hathaway to me uh, is uh, probably the best private equity firm around. I think uh, Warren has the perfect model. Uh, he has an insurance company that's able to fund all of his acquisitions and his investments that he makes. He's as capable as they come. He's got to surround himself with very good people. Um, uh, and so if you look at, uh, at that model and you say, okay, uh, what should uh, KKR have going forward? It's to have more permanent capital. And, uh, and be able to hold it longer and continue to grow the businesses that, we, uh, that we've made. Uh, we bought some wonderful companies. You sort of hate to see them go at some point. Any risks? What kind of risk? To going public. There's always risk. Uh, you know, there's risk staying private, uh, <laughs> for that matter. Uh, you know, so I think, yeah. you know, I think risks go both ways. Uh, you know, I'm not, you know, uh, look, Today, I, I, you know, I've said this uh, to our investors uh, yesterday, I've said it in public before, private equity is not private anymore, okay? I mean, we large private equity firms have a responsibility. Um, we have to work with governments around the world. Uh, when you have as many companies as we have and the size of the companies that we have, uh, we have an obligation. We have an obligation to the employees of those companies. We have an obligation to the communities, to the environment. Uh, and uh, uh, so, uh, you know, even though we're privately owned uh, or publicly owned, you still have to have those same, uh, those same obligations are there and you still have to work with all those people. And that's something that we focus very heavily on. Um, I wouldn't say we've always done that, but I'd say over the last uh, five plus years, uh, the stakeholder interest has become a much more important part uh, for KKR. And now, George Roberts and Henry Kravis place their bets on long short. So let's play long short now. Um, start out with New York real estate. Well, you live here, Henry. You, you, <laughs> uh, you, you go with that uh, one. Short term or long term? <laughs> <laughs> Both. Uh, well, a short term, I think it's uh, it's short. Uh, longer term, uh, long. Great. Um, modern art. A long, long. <laughs> American car companies. Long. Yeah. Long after the restructuring. Yeah. <laughs> Oil prices. Long. Long. Uh, gold. Golf. Gold. gold. Oh, gold. <laughs> gold. <laughs> gold. <laughs> Golf's long. <laughs> gold, gold is uh, uh, short. probably short. Short. Ben Bernanke. I think long. I think yeah. he's done a good job. I'd go long. I, and, not, and, and I think he's learning. And I think he's doing a really good job right now. The euro. I'd short. 
Short. Japanese yen? Short, short. That was George Roberts and Henry Kravis of KKR on the evolution of KKR. You can also hear them discussing how we got here. Next week, Bob Kelly of the Bank of New York Mellon reviews the news on video for FT.com's View from the Top.